Thank you. All right. Um, and I'd like to say hello to everybody there. And I want to say that as we were talking, just getting started, that this is really one of the very first times that I've actually given a talk without seeing the audience. And I usually, as a teacher over the years, I feed off of the audience and I feed their responses. And for example, when you're in class and you teach and you're talking and the student turns their head a little bit sideways, kind of like, oh, that point didn't come across the way I thought. I get those visual cues. I won't have that today. Um, so if I uh, mess up on that, um, please throw it out in the comment section and question section at the end. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you all. Um, it's, it's an honor to be part of um, the community in Perfusion. And I think today, you know, with what's going on with the COVID and that, we really are thinking about the community even more on a greater perspective. And um, it's it's really been, a you know, with a little bit of downtime, we've been able to reflect on all of our lives, I imagine. So let's continue to say prayers for the people um, that are that are ill and hope that we get through this. OK, um, further on to thank I got to thank on this particular it's a case report, but this case report um, is an N of one but the people involved in this case report was the entire team. Um, I talk about the concept of team perfect perfusion and my phrase behind that, what about team perfect perfusion is, and, and my staff hear it all the time, is that it's hard for one person to be perfect, but it's very possible for a team to be perfect. And in this particular case, this was a huge team effort all the way across. I want to thank Davey Fisher and Ken Ingersoll, excuse the typo there, um, for their help with the authorship of this case. And um, they really were attached to this more, and um, they have equal ownership of this, if not more. Um, again, I want to thank Sanibel for having me. Uh, I, I, really, I really enjoyed this meeting. I love it. And um, I want to thank everyone today who's online watching this. Makes me a little nervous uh, again. And um, and lastly, everybody who has helped me over the years become a better perfusionist and a leader. I, um, I, I, I'm, I am a work in progress and, uh, and you have helped me. Okay, taking care of business. Um, I have no financial relationship with perfusion.com. And, and I really wanna say this, any mention of any products or vendors is not an endorsement or conviction. I'm really just talking about this as like I said, one guy having a cup of coffee with somebody, and um, that's that's basically it. Okay, uh, in this case, so we, we want to report the intended use of this candy along with the other methods um, that that we were able to pull out of this cannula, no pun intended or pun intended, um, to be uh, to how convenient it was to meet the needs of this particular patient. Um, we're going to show the versatility of this cannula as dual drainage vino vino arterial ECMO cannula, a drainage cannula while on cardiopulmonary bypass, and a right ventricular assist device um, cannula that helped us store in our EV ECMO. Excuse me. Um, this cannula is intended for right ventricular support. It's a dual lumen device um, percutaneously, and that's really the, the magic right there, is that it's an inserted percutaneously through the internal jugular, commonly the right. And um, this is really kind of a, a new threshold if you think about it with a percutaneous RBAD. Um, the proximal inflow is stationed in the right atrium, common to other percutaneous venous cannulas that are used for ECMO. But the real um, spot here that makes it uh, so unique is the distal outflow of the lumen is um, past the pulmonic valve and um, in this case, I wrote it here, five centimeters, and I really want that number to be kind of put into your head because it's very important. Without that, you defeated the purpose of it. So I wanted to bring that up right at the beginning. Just some quick little snapshots on this line here on the left that says it's a 29 French. They also make a 31 French. And again, I don't want to sound like a salesman for the company. I'm just telling you about the cannula. Um, and again, with this cannula in that five centimeter mark that I was talking about, it's a good point to mention that, as we know, a lot of times people want to, the surgeons or cardiologists want to put in the smaller cannulas 
Um, if you have a larger patient and you put the smaller cannula in, you may not be able to achieve getting that five centimeter mark past the pulmonary valve. So this would, all this would be for naught. Okay. Quick little snapshots that I just took off of their online site video. Um, this is the introduction, the wire, they float a catheter on a balloon up across the pulmonary valve, much like the swan. And then they float the, the they remove the, the, the catheter, they leave the wire there and they float the um, cannula in there. And as you can see, there's in the right atrium and then we're gonna swing around. Oh, I missed it, I went too far. Um, and then there's another cannula. The, uh, the outlets are in the pulmonary artery. From there, a wet-to-wet -wet connection is made with your circuit. And in this case, it's a, it's a right ventricular assist device configuration. A nice little shot of what this looks like when it's all said and done. Um, the slide that I did pull off the internet, I want to thank Joseph Hughes. Hughes is, it shows the um, hemodynamic benefits of this, of lowering end diastolic pressure, lowering end diastolic volume, the wall tension, mechanical work, the microvascular res resistance, the oxygen demand. Those are all the things that help with the recovery, yet at the same time, here's the things that help with the um, increasing organ perfu per perfusion. This design, like I said, is really um, the, the dual lumen cannula, uh, the, a cannula with these two outflows like this and the way that it's configured is really, uh, for us, has been a new, um, basically, realm and thought processes that we have to go through. In this case, we'll show that. Okay, um, patient present was a 35-year-old male, had non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, right ventricular failure, very large patient, um, 182 centimeters, 162, that's correct, 162 kilograms, and their BSA was 2.88. Um, the plan here was uh, destination therapy with a heart mate 3, and um, they placed a balloon pump in the right femoral for hemodynamic support until we got the fellow to surgery, got him tuned up a little bit and got him to surgery. Uh, shortly in the process prior to um, going to surgery, there was a need for ECMO. Um, so the patient was placed on VVA ECMO in the cath lab. You can see our configuration here. Um, instead of using that catheter for a RVAD type inflow outflow scenario, we actually used it just as for drainage. Um, our ECMO circuit uh, currently is a uh, Centromag with um, a Quadrox assuming it's available, and, um, and then in this case, we went right back into the left femoral artery. Um, not on this slide. We were on VA ECMO for a short period. Uh, the next day, we took them back, and then we did insert the impella that weren't done simultaneously, and uh, we, we did a uh, pericardial window, and then later we put the impella in just to help unload. We did remove the balloon pump at that point. Excuse me. And so um, the day of surgery, the heart mate insertion, um, the plan was just to withdraw the ECMO just prior to bypass. Um, the idea came up to save the blood and to limit the, the loss of the blood from the circuit is just throwing it away. Uh, we were able to disconnect, clamp to disconnect it, and then um, the two cannulas, uh, inlet, inlet um, and outlet uh, Connectors were placed in a uh, basin with saline, and we literally pulled out of the basin and pumped into the right femoral artery. Once that was done, then we disposed of the, um, the echo circuit, but then we kept the Protect Duo in place for CPB. So what we did is we took um, the proximal portion of the Protect Duo, and we wide that to a, a dual-stage venous cannula that was inserted in the um, right atrial appendage. Now here's a very important note, the surgeon came up with this. Um, we clamped the distal lumen of the Protect Duo because the surgeon was concerned once they cored out the ventricle for the LVAD that potentially we could have entrained the air. And so that was a really um, good catch for the team. <clears throat> Standard central cannulation for the ascending aorta. Our tubing circuit, CPB circuit, was a Levanova Smart Tubing Pack. We used the Inspire 
8 oxygenator with the um, integral filter, and we use the dual reservoir where you can isolate corn, uh, cardiotomy blood. We find that um, is helpful for us while we're waiting on the ACT and different things. And we use the revolution centrifugal head. Prior to initiation, the, the impella was pulled back across the aortic valve into the descending aorta. Um, Heartbeat 3 device was implanted uneventfully. Post pump, um, following the termination, the patient required a fair amount of inotropic support and um, thought it was a good idea with that we could just use the Protec cannula and go on VV ECMO. Um, again, the pump inflow limb was connected to the proximal portion of the Protec duo and the pump outflow was connected to the distal portion residing in the main pulmonary artery. Post-operatively, um, this, the, we were able to, day five, we were able to remove the oxygenator from the circuit and turn this back into the RVAD of really what we um, were, that's what the cannula's main intent is. At post day eight, um, the Protecto and the RVAD support was, was withdrawn and uh, the RV recovered well. The post-operative course still, the patient was hospitalized for six weeks, but he was discharged uh, two days before Christmas. And I uh, just found out he recently was just seen in the clinic on 413 and is doing fine. Okay, for the discussion on the versatility, um, this cannula, as you can just see as we went through this, allows us to meet the demands for a patient that comes in with RV, LV failure, and especially with the, if their lungs are compromised. Um, with this cannula, we were able to meet we were able to unload the right side of the heart, yet at the same time um, provide ECMO. Um, in a standard VV ECMO situation under the other current choices that are available on the market, you wouldn't be able to offload the RV. Um, and subsequently, this cannula allowed us to do a little bit of both. <clears throat> so in the perioperative phase of the LVAD implantation, this was a great drainage cannula. Um, allows us to have um, that extra central drainage that you may not even get just with a standard two-stage. So for future discussion, um, there's a paper that is out there that talks about a right ventricular risk score. Something like this could be, um, we're going to begin to start talking about looking at this and maybe you may do some advanced um, preparations for cases that you are going to put in an LVAD in, or even a patient that's going to have a transplant or any of those other types of procedures where you're worried about the right, the right heart performing well. I'll add this to the new caveat of um, the world that we're in today with the increasing number of hybrid rooms, maybe a little bit more forethought when you come across these types of patients is that we do try to get them into the hybrid room so that we have a CRM available if needed. Um, this is, again, we're at a new level of care as we get more tools and toys, as some people may call, but at the same time, it's really um, beginning to open our minds on what's available. Um, I, I cannot talk enough about how this, this cannula, like I said, the versatility of it helps us. Um, the other side of that, even when you talk about the hybrid rooms, is there's the concept of the delay of care. If we can still put people on our beds quickly, we've done that in the past, but if you're delaying the care and you injure the RV while you're getting the care to them, that's a factor in itself. Like, like I said, the configuration now with something that can be put in maybe even in advance or in a room that allows you to put it in even quicker, this really is an added benefit for patients. Um, it, it, we've really been very happy. So in conclusion, this case report displays the versatility of the cannula. Um, it's a viable option for dual drainage. Um, it's an option as a drainage cannula for cardiopulmonary bypass and high-risk patients who have a risk of um, RV failure. And um, there's also, of course, a right ventricular assist device that you can now also incorporate ECMO into it as well. That's it. That's, uh, any questions?
be glad to answer.